So I'm going to start. <laughs> Welcome, Harris County. It is time for the Homegrown Lecture Series brought to you by the uh, Texas A&M AgriLife ANR unit, Ag and Natural Resources unit. I want to welcome you all here today. I am Paul Winsky, the commercial horticulture agent, and today we've got a great program lined up for you. Uh, our other hort agent, Brandy Keller, will be talking about making holiday plants last. Uh, so this is the last program uh, for 2021. And as you can see on the screen, we've already got our schedule set up for next year. Uh, a few minor changes. We are going to just once a month. So you can see uh, by the quarter uh, what what topics we will have. Um, but they were they were they will still be free um, and we do look forward to uh, uh, bringing them to you uh, next year. So uh, without further ado, this is going to be one of our demonstration um, uh, programs. Uh, I can see Brandy on the screen now, which is great. She is looking as wonderful as ever. Uh, so I am going to kick it over to our cameraman, Shannon. And Brandy, you guys can take it away. Good morning. Hi. Um, well, welcome for now my first live demo. Uh, as you see here, uh, we're going to be talking about holiday plants and how to make them last. Um, I couldn't hear Paul's introduction, but thank you, Paul. Uh, we're just going to get started right now. So the first thing I want to talk about uh, that Paul will enter into the chat is um, last year in 2020, I did a holiday plant talk and I covered six holiday plants. I'm really not going to try to cover the same information and he's going to put that YouTube video in so you can take a look at that if you want to learn more about uh, I covered uh, well what's on uh, the sign here, but it's uh, Norfolk Island Pine, Amaryllis, um, Cyclamen, Christmas Cactus, Poinsettia, and uh, I think there was one other one too. So uh, take a look at uh, that YouTube, and I think that ran about an hour, so it'll run longer than what today is. Um, but for today, we are going to start with poinsettias. So this is a euphorbia. Uh, you might be familiar with some of the annuals that they're really uh, light and airy. And uh, obviously the poinsettia is uh, one of the main holiday plants. Even though I covered it last year, I cannot do a holiday talk without talking about them. They are the number one potted plant sold in the United States. And when you think about their uh, cell frame is only six weeks, so that's incredible. Obviously, they come in a lot of different colors. Uh, what you see here uh, are the bracts. Those are modified. These are the flowers right here. You see a lot of these all the way open, which these some of them are, are open. Um, if you see them all the way open, then your plant is not going to last as long. Uh, the, this plant right here, the flowers are definitely um, much more open. Uh, in the store, they usually come. I'm going to show you the protective sleeve that I took out. You know this. The reason this is really important is because these plants are, uh, they like warm temperatures. So once it starts getting cold, uh, this can protect them from the store to the car to the car to home. Uh, but you want to take that out as soon as you get them home and let them uh, really air out. These um, definitely do not like uh, wet soils. So you want to let them dry out between waterings. Uh, I have starred on uh, my list here. If I had to pick the number one thing rule to follow uh, with poinsettias, it would be do, um, do not over, over uh, water, let them dry out. Uh, they like bright light, so you don't want to put them in a really dark corner. They're not going to last as long. Uh, put them near like a window, but nothing that has a lot of drafts. Again, they do not like that those cold temperatures. So if there's a draft or maybe a vent from the air conditioning, uh, it can really affect um, 
you know, how, uh, how those uh, plants look. Uh, you will see some leaf drop and some curling. Uh, a couple of these I got from a big box store. Uh, the pink one came from uh, a nursery. Obviously, a nursery is going to be much more attentive with watering. So, you know, just, just be aware that, you know, if, if the nursery has a little bit higher of a cost, that there's a reason for it. Uh, these are non-toxic. I think one of the biggest misconceptions is that poinsettias are poisonous. Uh, they actually are not. But as you may be familiar with, if you break one of these leaves or um, or the flowers, it'll produce this uh, white milky sap. Now that can uh, cause a dermatitis on some people, but not everyone. So going to our next plant, the Christmas cactus. So the, these are just really unique. And I mean, the flowers unique, the green, you know, the, the greeneries are unique, unique. Reason I say greenery is that these are not actually leaves. Uh, these are modified stems. So they're just kind of like flat chain like segments. Uh, those are stems. And then of course we have the flowers here and the flowers come in all different um, colors, white, pink, red, uh, yellow. They do make really excellent house plants. Uh, they are super long lived. Uh, the, this probably above all the plants I'm going to talk about is uh, probably has the best option of surviving and doing really well as a, a house plant long term. They are not cold hardy uh, and they do like bright indirect sun. Uh, again, with like poinsettias, you only want to water uh, when they are dry. Uh, with your plant, you should be able to water, and this would be the poinsettias too, and see how heavy that is. This I got from the nursery, and it's still pretty heavy, so I can feel that that does not need to be watered uh, for a while. Uh, the one thing with uh, the Christmas cactus is uh, a lot of the buds will drop. And the buds will drop when uh, there's any kind of movement. So even from the store to home, um, to the car, from the car to home. And then also it can, um, they can drop if like they're around a lot of drafts. So with this particular plant, I mean, just moving it from the store to here, uh, I think I lost at least a dozen buds. So that's probably the number one complaint that, you know, you'll hear about Christmas cactus, you know, oh my gosh, my buds are dropping. And it is, um, and and that is because uh, just just that mere movement. If you move the plant before buds have developed, then you will not have as much of a of a drop. The other. Um, the other tip I can provide, I, I know a lot of people that have Christmas cactus and maybe once they have bought it, uh, they just don't bloom the same. And the reason is these are short, um, short day plants, you know, like uh, like numerous ones that we have here. So they need a certain amount of darkness. So if you actually have them in a room uh, that you're not going to be turning on the light a lot, um, so that way those buds can develop, then you'll have a lot more um, buds. There are even instances where uh, one side of the plant, maybe this side of the plant is facing a window that doesn't get the direct light from the indoor light and that side is the one that bloomed. So if you're wondering why one side bloomed and, and one didn't. Uh, the one thing I like about Christmas cactus is I just think there's a lot of nostalgia to it because they are so long lived. Um, I have a friend, her Christmas cactus blooms every winter because it is a Christmas cactus and, um, and that reminds her of her mom. Uh, I just recently learned uh, last year that my mom had gifted a Christmas cactus to my sister-in-law. Uh, it was probably 15 years ago and she still has it. Um, so I think there's a lot of memories that come with these particular plants too, but I mean for Goodness sake, look at those flowers. I mean, they're just so gorgeous. All right, now we're gonna go into some of these tiny ones up here, if we can get a little bit of a, um, a close up. So I found this frosty fern. Uh, there were some bigger versions, but I mean, come on. These were irresistible and adorable, right? <laughs> uh, but the frosty fern is, uh, the other name is club moss, spike moss. Uh, 
funny, it's not a moss and it's not a fern. It's uh, somewhat related to a conifer. But if you look at these leaves, they're like uh, scale-like leaves and they, they're a little bit darker green. There's a little bit of frosting around here, and the um, greenhouse growers actually uh, get that frosting to come out with the silver tips by dropping temperatures. So that's done on purpose, you know, it kind of looks like snow on the tips. Uh, these are not like the other plants and they really need um, shade. They also do not like to be dried out whatsoever. This one is uh, dry right here a little bit and I have a tray with some water. So just letting it soak it up from the bottom uh, is probably going to be the best bet for that plant. They like a lot of humidity. So what's the um, what's the su success rate of this particular plant uh, after the holidays are over? Well, they prefer a humidity of 70%. Do you guys keep your houses at 70% humidity? Probably not. Um, I actually have a, a temperature gauge at home that does um, have the humidity on it and I know ours you know bounces around 50 to 60. So in a typical situation uh, these may not make it. So how do we get them to last longer? Well number one you're not going to want it to be in this small pot for very long but with these plants they actually grow from the center out along the um, soil. Uh, so it will need a little bit uh, wider of a pot, but it can actually be shallow because the roots um, do not grow very deep. Uh, the biggest uh, probably tip I could give for these is uh, make it into a terrarium. So if you have that guy and you have some kind of decorative glass, look that just makes it. <laughs> um, that's going to create its own humidity in there. So these particular types of plants do really well in terrariums and actually some of the other small ones do too. So it could be that you just set up um, a, a terrarium after the holidays. Uh, but again, they, they like it very warm. Uh, these also are very non-toxic, so no worries there. Uh, you want to water below, as I said, but also use room temperature water. Do not use cold because it can uh, give some kind of shock. If you have it in a window, it'll burn those leaves too. So we're just going to take that guy back out of there, put him back in the water. And uh, I can already tell that it's, even though the pot's so tiny, I can tell that it's um, absorbed some of that water. Uh, the pepper, uh, I have no reason. <laughs> it's just look how cute it is. This ornamental pepper. So um, if I kept this, I would definitely want to pot that up. I would pot all of these up because I don't really think that, um, you know, the, they're very cute, but they're not very sustainable that way. So um, very cute. And I had him in his own little dish too. So then the polka dotted plant, hypoestes, and these are really light. I have not watered them in a couple days. Uh, I don't know how well you can see these, um, but you may see these uh, sold as annuals. They can grow as annuals, um, long-lived annuals, uh, um, house plants, or even like at, the, at Christmas. They grow more bushy, about 30 inches tall. Uh, really the attraction of these plants is that foliage. I mean that white, there's pinks, and then there's um, red. This one's a little bit more red. Uh, they do like to um, have consistent um, soil moisture, uh, not as much drying out. It can dry out a little bit. I mean, this is super light and it's still doing all right. It wouldn't, you know, uh, suffer like uh, the frosty fern would. Uh, the one thing with these is that they, if you have them in too low of light, they might get a little bit leggy, so a little bit spindly, and then you can easily just prune those and new growth will start growing and, and make more of a compact um, look. And again, these would do really well in that terrarium with uh, the club moss. Maybe not um, stay that small, but all right. Oh, and those are non-toxic also. See, I'm starting to include toxic and non-toxic because that's usually a question we always get. And especially when you have them in the house with either kids or cats and dogs, then you really want to know. Um, I know I had my, uh, I had an 18-year-old cat that 
ate some uh, Dracinia and she lost her eyesight temporarily. So uh, try to avoid that. So, okay, at home, if you're at home, say this name out loud if you know it. It's going to be one of two ways. So it can be Kalanchoe or here, Kalancho. <laughs> <laughs> so we were saying, yeah, we really never heard Calancho before, but um, it's exactly how it looks on the, you know, uh, red out. So with this, it has those really large succulent leaves and the edges are real scalloped. And then you have the flowers in the center. So that inflorescence uh, is going to bloom from the inside out. Do you see how those outer blooms are still tight? So it's going to bloom from inside out. This also can get kind of leggy if it's in too much shade. Uh, you can uh, deadhead that flower when it's done and if it does get leggy you can prune that back too. This is a good one if you want to adjust it outdoors. It's just if you do you need to really um, take the time to adjust it over you know maybe a week's time because even though this and I didn't tell you the light requirement these like bright and direct light they like they like light um, just because they like light if you've had them in your house and they haven't had a lot of light um, taking them outside is going to be too much of a shock so just uh, let take them outside a uh, few hours uh, more each day uh, they are drought tolerant so that is an advantage if, if you know that you're simply not going to uh, water uh, very often these these are probably the the ones for you uh, the only thing is is these are toxic uh, they are cardiotoxic so um, with animals it can affect their uh, heart muscles so if you have animal but a lot of these are going to be higher up so either you put them up or maybe you just don't want to have them uh, cyclamen is right here. I covered this last year. I mean, everything about this is delicious. I mean, look at those flowers. So the flower bud actually starts hanging down like this and then it opens and then look, it turns and all the reproductive parts are on the underside right there. I mean, it's so fascinating. Um, but look at the leaves too. I mean, just the um, design of those leaves in the veins. Uh, so very beautiful. Uh, these, um, those flowers do bloom for a pretty good long time. Uh, but once they fade, uh, the plant will go dormant for a little while. The leaves will uh, drop off and then it'll uh, reset. These, unlike all the other ones we've talked about so far, uh, like it cool. They do not like those high temperatures. Um, if you, you need to if you have it by a window just be sure it's like really muted or indirect light um, these also i would either water the way i am right now or most of these would benefit from the other um, way if you have a tray and i actually didn't have the stones but if you have a saucer and you have pebbles and then you water inside the pebbles just be sure that it does not come up above the top of those stones uh, it will provide uh, humidity uh, that it needs and the plant will be able to um, absorb that, that up. So they like cool temperatures uh, and water from the bottom and these are toxic to cats and dogs also. So uh, just be aware of that. Going on to, oh, this is our last one. Um, and then uh, I think there were some, uh, actually there's another one I don't have on here. So the orchid, uh, this is Phalaenopsis. Uh, so there are different types of orchids, but these um, are the type that have that one stem coming up. So you're going to see these a lot in the grocery stores, the big box stores. They are so easy to care for. They're gorgeous. Um, I mean, I'll move the, okay. And would it, I could move this down here. <laughs> okay. All right. We got a lot to work with when we're doing these in person, don't we? Um, all right.
So with these, we have that one stem coming up. Again, they're really easy and they're also um, called like a low light orchid because they really don't uh, require the same amount of light as other orchids. Uh, they, will, they will do well just in a um, bright or um, indirect uh, bright uh, light. Uh, maybe an east window would, I think I have mine in an east window and um, or if you know west or south, maybe just not you know that direct light coming in. Uh, long bloomers, these will last two to three months. Now when you get them from the store and they're already blooming, uh, they're not going to last as long because you're already purchasing them while they're already open. But once they bloom again, that's when you're really going to notice how long lived these flowers really are. Uh, they do not like to be overwatered. Uh, these roots in you might be familiar with it, but they're not um, they're not potted in regular potting that will hold water too much. It's usually in bark or moss. Uh, bark, that water is going to evaporate quicker than moss, so it depends what you purchase it in. Again, you should be able to lift that and see, um, you know, if it if it needs to be watered. Uh, the big thing with these roots is that they need air. They actually Uh, so that um, these leaves are still really beautiful. But if I tried to take it out of here, you'll see how like the bark just falls off. So I know I have that starred right here that the roots need air. So do not or don't and if you try regular fill. Um, this is another one that's really have the pebbles on the side. You just water the saucer. But every once in a while uh, um, you know, the top. If you water it from the it could be over the sink and then drain it then cut it down. Um, if Something does, if you feel like you're doing everything right with your orchid and something's still not, you know, something's off and you're watering it, uh, it could be the type of water. Uh, they actually do not like distilled or um, no distilled and, oh, no soft water, which isn't um, too, uh, too prevalent here. So some tap water. Uh, and I don't know, I'm going to show you this, if you can get a close-up of this, um, Shannon. So this is a co-worker's orchid, and I'm going to show you these roots. And so these air roots should be like a frosty white right here. And you see how the tip is getting a little bit darker? That means it needs to be watered. Um, with this one also, the, the flower has faded. So you could possibly get a second bloom flush. Uh, I don't know if you can see, Shannon, there's a node here and there's a node here. So one, two. If you cut right above that second node, you may be able to get this to bloom again. And I'll take care of that, Pete. Actually, I'll just, yeah, there you go. You may be able to get this to bloom again. If you choose to cut it all the way back to um, the base, next year your blooms will be bigger because it's not putting in enough, you know, as much energy um, throughout the year. So you can leave it here and just see if it'll bloom again, or you can cut it all the way down and let it conserve its energy for, uh, for next year. And also with these, uh, once, once they have bloomed, uh, then you can move them. Uh, there are a few plants here that those flowers will last longer in te cooler temperatures and if you have them sitting in a bright sunny window then uh, it's going to shorten the life so if you can move these once they start blooming maybe where um, it's a little bit cooler out of the window um, let's see the cyclamen definitely the clan uh, the kalanchoe even that one uh, again, I think I mentioned earlier that these blooms last longer when it's a little cooler. And I have another plant over here that I don't have on the cards, uh, and that is the, the oriental lily. These also will last longer if the temperatures are cooler. Uh, this plant I picked up 
last week it was getting it was starting to fall over so i just took a ribbon i actually have a little another tie under there i tied that up uh, one of these flowers this one you can tell as it's getting older it gets darker and it's starting to fade uh, one of the petals fell off but you could see i cut the stamens off of that one um, i'm real conflicted with the stamens because I think they really add to the plant. They're gorgeous. But the problem is, is what? <laughs> they, they're messy and they can stain. So um, what I do is, and I'm gonna do this to see if you could just see them a little better. Uh, I just trim these off and it's gonna kind of take away a little bit from the beauty, but um, you're not going to have to deal with all that pollen falling onto the table if that is um, where you have it. Uh, these oriental lilies um, really are not meant to stay as house plants. Uh, you can plant these outside. Uh, Stargazer um, is an is one, and it doesn't it just doesn't naturalize naturalize quite as um, easily as some of the other uh, oriental lilies. Um, otherwise, uh, they do well if you plant them outside. Uh, talking about, just to finish up, planting outside, uh, the poinsettias can be planted outside. Uh, two things will happen though. One, you're not gonna get these colorful bracts because they're short day plants. They need total darkness um, in the fall in order to develop these. And then the other, the other thing is, is if it gets um, really cold, you're gonna lose it. Um, you know, just again, they're not cold hardy. Uh, in their native uh, Mexico, they can get up to 10 feet tall. So that's that's crazy. Um, and then some of the other ones that can go outdoors are, look, <laughs> that one absorbed enough water. Um, these can go outside definitely. And then even cyclamen can go outside if you have, uh, if you just watch the temperatures and it's um, shady. Uh, I think that I think that covers what I have on the table. Uh, I'm looking around at my props to make sure I talked about everything. Are there questions? Okay, Shannon. Uh, first question is from Alicia. Make sure she repeats the question also. Um, what advice does she have for repotting Christmas cactus? Questions from Alicia. Okay, so, okay, so Alicia is asking about repotting Christmas cactus. Number one, they really prefer to be uh, uh, pot bound. Oh, there we go. <laughs> they really prefer to be pot bound. So uh, if, if it's not blooming a lot, um, that could also be a reason, uh, but any kind of well draining soil, if you do need to repot it, uh, if you do, then just let it go a few years to make sure that it is, um, see this just came from the nursery. So I bet this is gonna be, mo ah! <laughs> look, <laughs> can't have a live demonstration without something funny happening. Look at those roots on there. That's really great, but that's far from being root bound. Um, so the fir my, first, my first concern would be, does it need to be done? If you do do it, just not put it in um, too big of a step up. Uh, so that way there's you know, not a lot of soil around there, uh, but well draining soil and um, when it's dormant. So you know, after the uh, blooms have uh, fallen. And I wanted to show, um, there was one of these that I saw some roots, but um, I don't know which one it was. Okay, any other questions? Okay, Shannon. Paul's another... been taking care of them. Yeah, hold on, hold on. One more question. Um, does she have any fertilizer options uh, regarding the presentation for any of the plants? Okay, so the question is fertilizer recommendations, and they're going to be uh, really a little bit different uh, from each other. That is something that is a good question, and I can uh, post that on Facebook, or if you have, um, you want to contact me, my contact is brandy.keller at a amu.edu, and I can send those off. 
some of the links that Paul, um, I think he had uh, the, um, uh, <laughs> oh, last year's talk. And then there's a link to the Harris County AgriLife website. And I know there's three links for holiday plants. So some of those may, um, may address whatever plant that you're talking about with the fertilizer. Um, and then also, uh, the, one of the last links he would have posted would be to the American uh, Orchid Society. So I know that they address fertilizer on there also. So um, yeah, it's just gonna be a little bit different. For me personally, I am the worst fertilizer. Um, not, it's kind of on purpose though. Oh, I don't know if you saw this white one. He was sitting over there by my, by my vulture. Um, look how pretty that is. Uh, I tend to not be a big fertilizer and I just really don't have uh, much of a problem, but um, you know, it's all individual. So any other questions? Uh, I think that is it. Um, okay, so um, there was something I was trying to remember before, before oh yeah, before the giveaways. Um, Okay, well, if you have any questions, just uh, let me know. I will be posting some stuff, uh, you know, going into the weekend on holiday plants since that's on everyone's mind. And uh, I don't need all these plants at my house. So <laughs> there's going to be a giveaway. Uh, I said initially um, that it would be Monday for the early bird and then um, Friday, but Friday is right after Christmas. <laughs> like, isn't that the... Day week. So I think I'm going to do Monday and Tuesday. What that would require is for you to go on and do that survey. Um, it's really fresh in your mind anyway right now, right? And it's only going to take about three minutes. Um, so when you do that survey, uh, you will uh, opt in for that giveaway. And so um, on Monday, I'll do one. And then on Tuesday, I'll do another. And it'll just be uh, the poinsettias. Definitely this orchid. Who's going to get that? So when you come in to get pictures, hopefully, or come to pick it up, we'll get a picture and, and we'll be able to like show you off. Um, this Christmas cactus, uh, I guess that we'll, we'll have to, you know, see how many buds. <laughs> the ones that are in bloom are good. And then even all these tiny ones too. So, uh, you know, I might do a couple uh, different giveaways. So there's definitely some great plants here for you to have. Any other last minute questions? Uh, no, Shannon, she can close us out. All right, well, this was really fun getting all these together. Um, it's a lot of information. Look back at last year. Uh, I really hope that you have uh, great holidays coming up and um and hopefully you know and, and put this in your survey you know if it's motivated you to try a new holiday plant um i know you know we always go to the store and and get the um good old you know the tried and true poinsettia uh but hopefully you'll um, get a new one and and then see how uh how it lasts uh, past the holidays. So thanks for joining today. Thanks for Shannon and Paul for um, helping out and uh, just have a great rest of the year. Merry and Christmas. Merry Christmas from a &R. Happy New Year. And uh, remember in January, we're going to one week, um, one presentation a month. So that'll be the first Thursday. So see you then. Thanks. <laughs>